Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we're answering is, what's in the box in regards to this? This is a copy of the Quacks of Quedlinburg, which I received for my birthday this year, that I'm really excited to dig into because I've heard fantastic things about this game. But I decided to wait and record this video for you, our fans, so that you can see what's in the box at the same time I have. Uh, this has won a number of awards. It's a highly acclaimed game, and I am looking forward to checking it out for the first time. I don't think I really need to explain more than that. I just know it's a game of mixing potions in a big pot, and it's drawing stuff out of the bag, and it won the Kenner Spiel, and it won the Golden Geek 2018. 2018, it's taken me too long to get to this game. It's taken me three years. That's terrible. All right, what we're going to do is I'm going to tip the camera down, and I'm going to show you what's in the box. Quacks of Quedlinburg, Wolfgang Warsh. I think this is my first Wolfgang Warsh game, which I know it's a shame. We have rules that are surprisingly thin. Wow. Okay. That that is uh, not. I expected a much thicker rule book. So I love this. Right off the start, a picture of every component in the game, all laid out, nice and easy to see. That is a great way to be able to check you got everything, including showing both backs and fronts of cards. So big bonus there. North Star. Um, we got the story, lots of images, uh, two column layout, dark text, light background, fonts big enough, lots and lots of examples. I, I'm just shocked by how short that I expected this game to be a little more complex, which that doesn't necessarily mean you can't have a complex game in only eight pages. Yeah, eight pages, including some game variants. Very impressed. Uh, for those of you who don't like to read, watch it played. Uh, Mr. Rodney Smith, fantastic fellow Canadian, has done a video for this. So that's it. Wow. Okay. Then we get the punch boards um, and, and some rats. I love the art. That's actually really cool art. And yes, it's the, the back of a board. Again, I have not played this game, but really impressed by the artwork here. Um, we have a bunch of tokens, number one through four, with like weird mandrake, it looks like, on it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch one of those, and we'll show that off over here. So here is a one Mandrake token. Thickness is decent. Nothing to complain about there. We're going to toss that in the lid for now. And then we have this very colorful board. All kinds of numbers on the top of it, and so on. Then we have different colored. All right, so the punch boards are two-folded. They come that way. Uh, we have a bunch. Of, I assume these are player colors. or No, I have no idea. A bunch of different books in different colors. Um, and some more things that go in the pot. I got some mushrooms, some bones. What I'm going to do is I'm going to punch this yellow one just to show it off. I have to assume this is some kind of spell you can complete with Mandrake. Again, not knowing the games. First place yellow chip has moved one extra place. The second, two spaces. And the third, three extra spaces. And then one Mandrake 8, two Mandrake 12, four Mandrake 18. Uh, these are two-sided with a different ability on the other side that says the total value of white chips need to blow up your pot increases according to the number of yellow chips placed. So there are a number of these books. Again, the thickness is nice. These could have easily been card, and I'm glad they're not. They're nice thick cards, thick cardboard. Uh, and again, a whole bunch of tokens on here. And we're going to have, it looks like more of the same. So lots of different books, lots of different colors, and lots of different of these ingredients that I know you go in a bag and you pull them out. And wow, as I said, lots of different ingredients that you can go into the bag and pull out. All right, almanac of ingredients. So there, there's why partly why the rule book was so thin. We have a four-page supplemental explaining each of those books that I saw. So that, that makes a little more sense. This, 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 this makes sense to me. And then we have more punch boards. So right in the middle, um, we have the Blue Players Potion Pot um, as I don't even know. There's all kinds of symbols on the bottom. We got a potion symbol up here in the top and then more ingredients. Uh, there's obviously a way to get more than 50 points that you can flip over. Uh, this is two-sided um, with different things at the bottom. So this must be either a difficulty or two different modes of play. That's always good to see. Adds replayability. And then the swirling pot of ingredients. Uh, then we have yellows. This would be the color I will be playing when we play and this is another one where it's folded. So then we have brass or red here as well. And finally, green, my wife's favorite color. 
That is a bigger than I expected player board for some reason. It's just chunkier. All right, what do we got in here? So we have a serviceable two trough insert to keep things somewhat separate. What I like is there's some artwork here. So I'm assuming this is where you would keep the potion, the recipes. Uh, another big bonus, a bag of baggies. Always appreciate this. Every company that gives me Ziploc bags, thumbs up to you. And then we have the bag to put the tokens in. Comes with an elastic around it. That's that's a nice cloth bag. And there is one for every player. See, that is something I didn't even know about the game. So you're each doing your own bag building. And this has some little bit of... There we go. So very nice drawstring bags. They're silky feeling. May actually be... I don't think they're actual silk, but they're kind of silky feeling black bags. And we have a very unique looking die. Uh, with a pumpkin... A water with an arrow, a piece of stone, a number two on a scroll, a number one on a scroll. I think that hits. There's two of the number one on a scroll sides. A uh, nice wooden die. Very light, but it is etched, which is nice. So this isn't going to get scraped off or anything. Nice die. Then we have some tokens in the player colors. You won't be able to see the blue because of my special effects here. So what I'm going to do is pull out the yellow, and I assume these are for each of the players. So we have a handful of tokens here, and what I'll do is I'll give you close-ups on the yellows. So first off, there is a little drop, or drop droplet. Then there are four discs that are two-sided. One side has that similar water drops symbol, the other side is blank. Oh, no, I was wrong. They're different than that. All right, let's check at these a little closer. So we have one. That is a water drop on one side, nothing on the other. Then we have a second that is a rat and nothing on the other side. Then we have a water drop with nothing. And we have a nothing with nothing. So double blank. So that's just the yellow ones. Um, this yellow drop must be like a round marker or something because it doesn't exist in the other colors. But just to take a quick look at reds, we have the same thing. So we have a rat blank. Water drop blank, water drop blank, and blank blank. So that's what we have in the different four different player colors. Next up, I see some cards, which I'll grab in a second. All right, not a thick pack of cards, fairly thin little deck of cards. Opened easy enough. So these look like some kind of asymmetric player powers or something or spells you can learn. So you have a Romani looking woman on the back and then on the front are some card texts. So again, over here, you can see it. This one particularly says, choose, move your droplet two spaces forward or take a purple chip, choose wisely. Uh, this next one, I notice they do say different things in the corner. It says, move your droplet one space forward. The pot is filling up. And there's a number of these little stack. And then we have similar with the Romani woman, but with blue on the other side. So I don't know if these are good or bad. The threshold for white ships is raised from seven to nine this turn. And it says living in luxury. So some type of event cards or something. Again, I have not played this game, so I couldn't tell you. Small stack of those. And finally, we have what's becoming more and more common in modern board games, the uh, crystals, the plastic crystals. Must be some form of in-game currency or something you're tracking. There's a good handful of these. And that's it. That is what we have in the box for the Quacks of Quedlinburg, one of the most hyped games since it came out in 2018 and one I am really looking forward to checking out. I'm just going to throw everything back in this box and close it up. There you have the Quacks of Quedlinburg. So there you have it. What you get in the box with the Quacks of Quedlinburg from North Star Games. I realize I'm a little late to the party with this one. Most people have probably already seen this and probably already played the game. But personally, I haven't, and this is my first time actually touching it uh, due to being in quarantine for a year and a half almost now. I haven't had a chance to get out and actually try it. So I'm looking forward to trying my copy of Quacks of Clubberg. Looks fantastic. Looks simpler than I expected. The rule book was much shorter than I thought. Component quality is excellent. I know a whole bunch of people have been doing the geek up option and replacing those tokens with plastic ones. I don't know. I don't think that's necessary. Um, yeah, it's going to upgrade the game. It's going to feel a little better, but the tokens that are in here, there's nothing wrong with them. Yes, I get it. You spend the money, it's your favorite game, you make it look cool, all the power to you, but it definitely doesn't seem like a necessary upgrade. 
So that's it. That's my thoughts on the Quacks of Quedlinburg. That's what you get in the box. I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. You can head out to our website at tabletopbellhop.com, find all kinds of gaming content. If you appreciate what we've been doing on the show, on the blog, on our podcast, it'd be awesome if you headed to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and considered tipping the bellhop. Thank you, good night, and game on. <laughs>